it's hard to captivate mm. an audience. If you look at my top 10 videos, they're all three hour videos. You look back and you go, yeah, well, it's taken you nine years to get to almost 700,000. Right? That's all like 300,000 of that's come in the past six months. Let's go. What's up? Today I had my boy on, Eddie Pinero. Good friend of mine, love his inspired way of looking at life and being always expanding himself, talking about doing hard things. And today we dive into finding your unique voice, how to create content, how to find your zone of genius, how he's exponentially growing, what he loves to do while adding value and making his impact on the world. What could be better? I hope this video literally changes your life. And if it does, you could throw a like at the least. I love you. Have a great day. I'm in my apartment now, but I was, uh, I was clearly not on, on a roof now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have you ever made the joke? Like, you know, BC and AD when people are referring to time. So AD for you is after dunking. <laughs> That's so good, dude. I want to do that on a YouTube video. Very seriously. Like, Hey guys. So, uh, about 2016 BD, like before stopping dunking or be actually it would be before dunking. So like AD and my mindset's changed. Like just, and like people would come and like, what is that AD? Is he talking about prehistoric time? <laughs> <That'd be> great. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, I'm recording everything at all times, by the way. Your life is just people. Yeah. People. One big, we show. have a breakfast, we have a coffee. I'm like, this has been recorded. When do you want me to post this? I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, it has been like what you've known that I've been doing for a while. It's it just constantly trying to, I don't even know if scale is the right word. It's just evolve uh, for myself and then for the brand, you know? So like, you remember three years ago, four years ago in Florida, it was like very much me behind a mic, writing, mm -hmm. recording, editing, getting it out there. And, uh, you know, one of the things I discovered is like, uh, it's actually really well put in the book. 10 X is easier than two X. I don't know if by Dan Sullivan, it's, it's Ooh, really what dude. So now I have a rule. I've done, <laughs> if I hear a book three times in my life, come up, I have to read it. And uh, I don't really live by that rule actually, but that's the second time I've heard it. Okay. So, one more. See? Yeah. I'm going to have, oh, you can't have say someone it twice. text you. <laughs> you say it twice. <laughs> deal. Deal. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, the idea is like two X is, growing linearly and it's actually like a, sort of a repetition of the same thing exponential growth 10x growth requires not more of the same thing but like a total rethinking and so like one of the conversations i had with my now business manager is just like someone that i i talk a lot with and throw ideas back and forth with um is like where's your value add it's not editing it's not audio quality it's not posting it's telling stories with a camera with a mic onto a camera right so anyway long story short is i'm building systems that allow me to speak as much as i can record as much as i can and then outsource everything and uh so it's been slowly acquiring editors that are just awesome um social media uh, manager who's incredible and then yeah folks to help me I think, you know, like very, uh, creative minded folks. It's not that I'm anti monetization. I just don't like, it's just outside my zone of genius. You yes. know, I just want to yes. make cool things, you know? Yeah. I feel you, dude. Um, so yeah, having someone there who's like, great, Eddie, make cool things, but here's how we can scale and monetize so uh, that your cool things can reach more people, uh, reinvesting back into the company. So that's what, that's what it's I been, feel, man. It's yeah. been great. That's beautiful. I feel I'm on the same path of like, I tried music. I still rap in my spare time, but I'm not trying to make it my forefront thing. Uh, Cause mm. I feel like that's my expression and just like my body. Like I, I love how the body and, and creativity like give me so many analogies where it's like, if I have this foundation of my body, I can go dunk. Like that's my expression. And now right now I'm like, healing and I want my it's painful and I find myself wanting to sprint but it still hurts or I want to go on a marathon but it's like not ready for that yet or I want to learn how to flip it's like focus on the foundation and then you can express in all the ways you want however you want and when it comes to that creativity I love that that you found your zone of genius and I think that would be a great question I'd love to share with my audience because I love how people like, express on camera I'm finding mine is helping people find their own voice like getting them to say it I think as you know, as a speaker, and I want to get your take on this too, 
saying something out into the world, saying it on a mic, especially posting it is so powerful in a way to push yourself towards a goal. So I love helping people get started on camera. I love helping them take the courageous action to say, that's actually what I want to say. I see people talking about this, but that's how I live. And so I want to know, like, how did you, anything that came up of how you really said, this is in my zone of genius and this is not. Like, how did you know that being on camera and speaking was yours when you could have been an editor and been a genius that way? How did you navigate that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an intersection of something you're really good at and something you love to do. Um, I think if I invested my life and in, in really focused on editing, you know, could I have been a, a 1% editor? Absolutely. But I, I would never have jumped out of bed in the morning and been like, you know, how do I tell a story with editing today? So to me, it's the um, verbal storytelling, it's writing and communicating that way, I think is really cool. So like the reason that I've been able to do one thing for so long and have so much fun doing it is because I am enjoying it and it is adding value. And yes. I think when you find those two things, like it's just such a, like I remember the first, that, that light bulb moment where it was like kind of doing what you've done in the past where it's like you're bouncing from these, you know, thing to thing to thing. You have these clues. I like this. Yes. I like taking the guitar and playing a show in front of people. I like taking the video camera running around the neighborhood. I like doing these things. But then once you find the right ingredients, put them together and it's like, uh, yeah, you know, yes. that's, that's where it's at. How would you describe that feeling of wanting to jump out of bed? Is it just joy or is there any other like feelings that help you light up? Cause it's like, sometimes I get inspired to edit. Cause it's like, wow, that was a powerful thing. But it, for my corporate job is a good example. I would like accomplish a task and it was like, it lit me up like 1%. I'm like, if this is the ceiling of like accomplishing a task in corporate, this is not for me. Yeah, I, it's, it's a good question. Like, cause it is joy for sure. But the, obviously yeah. there are days where it's not. And I think like when you're not working on it, there's this feeling like something's left undone. It's like that mm. feeling when you're watching a good movie and you hit pause, it's like, ah, like I want to continue <laughs> seeing where this goes. Ah, yeah. And to me, to me, that's, that's it. You know, it's, it's uh, a pull definitely to continue, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do we, how we, okay. Yeah. So that's what I would love is helping people tap into that pole. Cause when you feel that pole and you know it's your thing and it lights you up, uh, my, my first thought is you have to try a lot of things, try yeah. a lot of things. And then people are also, especially entrepreneurial, you might be trying to follow money as well because you need to support yourself. So any advice for people in 2024, trying to start content and doing what they love while trying to make it scalable. I think you nailed it. And like, sometimes it feels guilty to even give this answer because it's so seemingly <laughs> obvious, but like try things. So, yeah. and I give, I give my, my own test cases an example, like 26 in the corporate world, still doing this stuff that I hated, you know, <laughs> carpooling with one of my best buddies. And we're like, maybe today's the day we get a flat tire and don't have to go in. Like maybe yeah. today's the day. And yeah. when that happens, it's like, you got to look around and be like, this is, I, this is happening because I'm allowing it and right. uh, I, I can change it, you know? And again, seems obvious, but then I look back and I'm like a 26 year old man. I didn't realize that I put my head down and did what I thought I was supposed to do. And so you right. have to free yourself from that and understand, yes. Hey, life's not that serious. There's a lot of exploration involved. Uh, and when you find that thing, that's you yes. and start firing on all cylinders, like it changes your life. It's so fun to get up and like, feel like uh, you have purpose in the morning. You know, that's such beautiful. a beautiful thing. And I think to some extent we, we continuously need to be uh, tracking that down. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. I had another question I wrote down for you, which was, so for myself, I, let's talk about me now. Yeah. That's what I want to do. So that's really cool. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so try new things is something that I think is so underrated because people, for example, like, I don't know for it, where it's going to go. They stop themselves. Like, I don't know how, if I want to be the best, but I think underestimating trying new things and just throwing things waking up and trying something brand new from dancing, whatever it is, can really start that energy. So I just, I trying new things is, uh, what's the word? Never goes out of style. That's right. Things. You uh, never know what pieces you'll take, right? Cause like maybe, uh, and I'm not sure, I think you said you're, you're going to continue rapping like as a side yeah. thing, you know, creation, keep the juices burning or flowing. <laughs> you don't burn yeah. juices, but like, um, <laughs> there are, <laughs> uh, there are definitely elements there that I'm sure you're going to integrate into other things. Like my music thing, 
I remember yeah. standing in front of the, you know, uh, a stage. And even when there's, even it was, it was a bar at 11 PM at night and there's 10, 12 people in the audience, it's hard to captivate mm. an audience. And so you start thinking that way, like tapping into like, yeah. how do I put them first? Like me being on here is not enough. No one cares that you're there because you're there. Yeah. How do you make add value? Mm. And so like, I take that everywhere now. And there's all these yes. little pieces that, so just because yeah. you're exploring and trying things and something doesn't work, doesn't mean it was all for yes. not. There's value extracted, you know? Yeah. So good. I, the, the wrapping has been so wild because it's when I, when I finish work or I finish creating things and I'm just like, I hear something and words come, it's like one, it's just healing. And then you're, I feel like it's almost like practicing the channel for creativity for these other things. So you almost have to try new things to start working those muscles to get better at what your one thing is and you don't know mm. you just don't know so you have to stay open to seeing where you have to try it it's like a path it's like you have to start walking to, to know yeah. where it's going you can't like stop it um and maybe I, at the beginning it's say, it's yeah. it's knowing what it's not and that's enough like knowing what mm. you don't want is enough to start you know yeah. walk away from the stuff that you don't want and and just move you know do you have any wild stories that led, but you tried something so random and it led to a, a brand new insight that you still like remember that stands out today of like when you create something? I think some of the stuff that I did, um, I did a lot of like spoken word, almost like rapping stuff in 2018 and I had a blast doing it. Um, but it like wasn't my forte for sure. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. It was fun, but like there are, are interesting dynamics there. Um, one, it helped me realize like for what I'm doing, people care way, like it's way more important that the story gets through uh, than the delivery, right? Like there's one time, for example, we went out, we, you know, a couple buddies, uh, cameras, spent a couple thousand dollars out in the desert tracking, doing all this stuff. And uh, video didn't do that well. And then the next day I talked about how shitty the video did and just put up a blank thumbnail over my voice and it got like 80 times the impressions. And I'm like, okay, this is a story game. No one cares about the, you know, like that, that's important. And um, also like with the, the spoken word poetry stuff that I was trying for a while, like I, I could kind of tell it wasn't my thing. I'm glad I did it. Um, mm -hmm. But also the reaction was very strong. And there's like a, a a small group that like it really resonated with. And I think yeah. the piece that I take from that is there's value in putting yourself way out there and being vulnerable. Yeah. I think people understand it and appreciate it. And so yes. like, again, there's a, everything is, you know, context. And so if, if, is there a way, the question I started asking, is there a way to do that without getting in the way of the story and the value that you're adding people to people through mm. the story, right? I love that. It's like, you're just like, you're trying to tell a story in different ways. And like, which way are you out of the way the most? Exactly. Like, how do you get, exactly. That's a wild concept. It's like, so, Hey guys, 2024, you're going to be your most authentic self, but get out of the way too. So don't be you. And people are like, huh? No, but it's, a you gotta be you, you gotta be you, but it's like, understand how you can add value to your audience. Like there's a lot of uh, people online that make it about them and you can tell right away. Right. And that's yeah. not saying people aren't interested in you and they want to know your story and everything's better with a person that you can relate to. But when you, when it becomes about you, you lose that authenticity. I think it becomes transparent, you know, yes. can I, can and I like, ask you about that dance real quick. Of course. So when you're like, you want to be like, I think that's, what's cool about trying the new things is because that's like purely for you. Like that's what rapping is for me. It's like, it started for like, just a, a re like in my soul. I just wanted to like say these things if no one heard it, like into the void. And then there's that when you're posting and trying to reach an audience and tell a story, it's a, they're re resonating or they're reflecting back. So like Rick Rubin's quote really sticks with me where it's make art you love so much you want to share. Mm. And so how do you navigate that you're you're making something you love so much, but it's also like respecting that this is not resonating with the audience. Like how how would you kind of do that dance? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a tough thing, right? The, the reality is, if you love making something and you're pulled to do it, and it means the world to you, do it. If there's no market for it, you have a hobby, and enjoy the hell out of that hobby, right? But like, there's some crossover. You have to be pragmatic. We live in the real world, where you have to ask if I want to do this for uh, a, a living for my life. 
what yeah. steps am I taking? How am I evolving so that, yeah, I love it, but it's also adding value to people, to a marketplace. Yes. And that's that intersection. And it's why, you know, when your world within originated, this is the first time I've ever stumbled across that. Because it wasn't just that I wrote this speech and made this movie that I loved. I started getting emails like, dude, that resonated with me. That changed yes. my life. That X, Y, and Z. And it's like fireworks. Right. Because nice. I play guitar and do ah, that. So and good. like, it's fun, but it's a different story. That's a me thing, right? Yeah. This is like, I can impact the world thing. That's beautiful. It's such a fascinating thing to look at. It's like, I love this so much, but I, I, I want to impact so much. So you have to like do what you love. It's just like a wild dance. I just call it a dance because you don't always get it right, but you're also like learning as you go. And it's like back and forth. I don't, you don't have to not care what people think too. Sometimes you have to be like, that's my truth. Like if you made a video, I'm sure you might get some hate comments. You're like, I can't listen to that one. It's, it's not that yeah. it's not resonating. It's that, yeah. So it's all of that. Or distinguish between feedback is important, right? Because like mm -hmm. I get I get comments and, and I'm lucky, like 99% of them is good. That probably means I'm not being outrageous enough. Like the ratio is pretty good. But like distinguishing between comments uh, that are, Eddie, long time listener, um, you know, but this video is six minutes. I really enjoy it when it's two hours. Can you make more of those? That's constructive criticism yeah. versus I hate this guy's voice, right? That's something you just like push aside and continue forward. Uh, but you have to, you have to, you have to filter. Those. What would you say? What would you say to me when I post a rap and someone goes, do you dunk anymore? Oh, just kidding. I'm just you kidding. say it's, it's three months AD. <laughs> Hey, D, dude. That's so good. Okay. So speaking of the dunking too, because this is something really fascinating. I would love your brain on this. I love the people I've talked to. That felt like such a unique journey. I shared the journey and I built these connections. And now I'm seeing if they just, they were loving me, like pushing my limits. And I'm so grateful. And it, like I inspired so many people to do that. Now I want to do what you were saying of be the vessel. Like how do I help the most? What's the best way of, do I love a lot of things? but I love creating content. I love inspiring. How do I do that to impact the most people and listen to the people? And now with an audience that I already built on YouTube of 50,000 in 2024, I believe committing to any algorithm or any niche will be the most successful, but I'm also playing with the thought of like, what if I try to bridge the content? So mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of people in my shoes as well, because there was a wave of social when we, like four or five years ago where it's like, People are growing, but now it's saturated and different and algorithms change. So people have built an audience in one way. They either want to expand or shift. What's a good strategy in 2024, YouTube specifically, to kind of get an audience growing and uh, engaged? Um, well, I think it's taking something you're good at. I mean, it's a, it's a continuation of the the message, taking something that you're, you're good at and uh, uh, understanding that if there's a market for it, you can help people do that. I think messaging is a big thing. Like you're in a, an interesting spot because you're a talented guy and you're great at a lot of things and you enjoy a lot of things. It's not news to you that that's a blessing and a curse. You know, yeah. it's like, I think, I think uh, being the person that's the 1% in one thing can just change your life because people know that you're the guy. And so, or gal, right? And YouTube is a credibility play. I think, you know, people talk a lot mm. about AdSense and all these things that don't get me wrong. They're great. The best thing about YouTube is it's a window to the world. And if you show competence there, people will come to you uh, as that person, as the expert in that field or that place. Um, so to me, it's like peeling back, you know, the, the layers, keeping it real simple. What are you great at? And how can you position yourself to help other people with that thing? I think you get that in line, you know, things start to sort of move into place. Yeah, that feels really aligned with what I've been working on, just helping people create content. And I called it energy coaching, but it's it's like removing limiting beliefs and helping people energetically realize that they're in their own way, like helping them be like, oh, I'm, I'm really not sharing this because I'm not because I don't have the right camera, but because I'm afraid to actually share my voice. So it's a combination of content I just see as a vessel of helping people realize what they really want to do. Like if you say, I want to share this with the world, you're taking a big step to do that, to enter that window and enter that realm of people saying, Hey, uh, what are you doing? What, what, this is a, this is a terrible video. Yeah. And that's a million dollar question. Like, how do I know I need an energy coach? Yeah. I have no idea. Right. Maybe I do. Maybe right. I need one desperately. And then, so like, mm -hmm. that's the story that you have to tell. Yes. When it comes to algorithms, 
how do you think they're best played this upcoming year? Um, you know, like sort of platform specific, uh, YouTube's watch time for sure. Uh, you'll win with good click through rates and long watch time, uh, retention within the first minute, sort of the basic, uh, you know, uh, one, two, three punch there. Um, for short form, it's like, I know, uh, at a high level, Instagram is like reels. Yes, but the reels are saturated and they're sort of pushing pictures and, um, carousels and so it's just kind of having a yeah. basic understanding trying things so like tiktok is going to start yeah. i guess opening up 30 minute videos it's testing the waters um there's a really cool like sample size that you get uh by just posting and then going back and uh right like i said i have an incredible social media manager now and we're going through and looking at out of, out of the past five months six months what reels did the best consistently and what are the patterns and correlations we see between those posts? Uh, because those resonated with the audience and like, sometimes the answers are just sitting right there and yes. we don't look at them like uh, YouTube. For example, I post three minute videos, 10, 20, 30, one hour, two hour, three hour over the past seven or eight years. If you look at my top 10 videos, they're all three hour videos. Right. And wow. so, Someone asked me recently, and it, but Steve, by like a long shot. And so someone asked me recently, like, why are you posting one of these a month? You know, I probably have 40 hours worth of content now at this point in a catalog, maybe more, 60. And so why the hell is every video not three hours? Like you started out with the new speech, <laughs> right? And then you stack it with uh, speeches in the same category so that you get that length that people like. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an awareness. I love that. I love that it's just three hours because it's like in the in the world that people are going shorter and shorter. They're like, your Instagram reel should be a blank. They should literally just be a blank and someone and that's it. But it's like, no, it's what's working for you. And and uh, being different is such a big one too. Like you're saying, trying new things. We've said it a million times, but having the courage to try something new, to almost shift the algorithms your way, to be like, this is captivating because it's new. And that's a dance as well. Uh, I'm actually playing around with LinkedIn. And it's like, mm. it's, it's what to me, I wanted to get your just initial thoughts because I'm new to it. But what's cool to me is like Instagram went through this wave of like super professional content, the better. And then it was like back to raw because it was like that those are too adsy, more raw content, more selfie type stuff. And I feel like LinkedIn's now new to that too. It's like they just want more raw stuff, selfies, things like that. Have yeah. you noticed anything? I have. Well, so LinkedIn is, we got serious about that maybe three months ago. Uh, and it's it in a way sort of replicates what I'm doing on Facebook. But the things that we have noticed are um, the text seems to do well, text and quotes and mm. videos, not as much like the real type stuff, right. uh, which I think is what you just said. And then I have noticed on Twitter slash X uh, that, yeah, the raw, real, hey, this is, you know, what I went through today or good morning, guys. Here's a view while I'm having coffee. And that's something that we're implementing um, in the YouTube community tab. Mm. And also on Twitter and soon mm. LinkedIn because there's that people want that, you know, people want the the behind the scenes yes. supplemental to the other stuff, obviously, but they, you know, there, it, it creates story and uh, a camaraderie with your audience. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to start playing with it. I just like the totally new audience, totally new game. And I'm just going to see how, like, I'm going to try new things. It's a place for me to just throw things out and try different things. I'm noticing selfies. Like when I scroll, there's like so many just like general selfies are working. I'm just like, it seems like they're like trying to play that raw game. Like who's authentic, which is fun for someone like us who were like, have been doing it for so long, airing so much to use that platform. Uh, another question I had was in 2024, I think every single person, especially if you want to like build a free life for yourself, should be creating content. One, because you build an audience, like an audience mm. helps everything, even if you want to go music route. And two, you, if you have a message and you feel like you want to, your voice, you want to share your voice, you have a, almost a responsibility because if you love doing it in person, whatever it is, your product, if you can help one more person online, it's almost a responsibility to do it. Do you think content, the question is, is not for anybody? Like, is there somebody that should not be creating content? Because mm. right now, in my eyes, literally everyone, should give it a shot. Yeah. Um, Charlie Munger, uh, RIP, has a quote, says, acquisition of knowledge is a duty. It's a moral duty. Mm. And I think, like, in a way, I mean, it, 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 they, they sort of fit together, you know, hand in hand. It's like you acquire knowledge to share knowledge. 
Um, mm. I, I, I think yes, but I think there's an asterisk. Um, I think content, like what does content mean? Content's like the same thing as, you know, stuff. So yeah. like what, <laughs> what type of content are you creating? Um, you know, and it's understanding, you don't, not everyone has to be talking into a camera. You know, you can be just audio, you can be writing copy and using just Twitter. You can, you know, there are a million things to do. So I think yeah. it's finding um, what suits your skills and aligns with what you're trying to do. Don't feel like you need to do reels and TikToks because everyone is. And I know some people will crucify me for saying that, like, you know, be everywhere. Yeah. Um, and sure, that's a luxury, maybe when you have the resources, but let's say year one, it's like, are you going to yeah. focus on being everywhere? Are you going to ask yourself what's your strength, your value add, and how does that best translate to content that can be shared? And I think understanding that's huge. If I started out like, you know, my first five years were on YouTube, if they were on Twitter, I don't know that I could have come through the way I did mm. uh, because I found my very specific, you know, <laughs> angle that I wanted to approach this at. So I think it's, it's really understanding that. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that reminder, just like, because I, I people they thought it's so easy to get caught up in what's growing or what the new thing is and what's where most people are. But if you can just again, what you love to do, hone in on that and trust that. That's a big process to and what you're to good at too. Like there's got to be yeah. again. I talk a lot about like you know the, the philosophical and like getting people you know excited to follow what they love, and that's a huge part of it. But like, don't disregard pragmatism. You know, again, like I always say, if I did calculus for 15 years, I'd be exponentially better at calculus on year 15, but my ceiling is so low there that it wouldn't really matter, you know? Yeah. So it's like, combine those two things, really seek out the, 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 the intersection of what you enjoy doing and what adds value to people. Like that's an important intersection to find. It's such, it's such a beautiful balance. It's like, you're able to continuously use your skills help other people. And then it's, I like the loop of it too. Like that, I feel like that's, that's almost like the journey of entrepreneurship is like, how do you make that keep growing itself? And it's a game, just like, it's like the same process as anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. I like the idea of, of cool. life as a game. Yeah. So cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so cool, dude. Hmm. Do you have anything else for you? Really helpful, dude. That's I want good. to talk about uh, the men's community you're doing, if you don't mind. I would love to hear more oh. about that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's called Levels, Levels Movement. And um, so this came from a place of, it's like turning a dark thing into what I believe to be a beautiful thing. So um, my, my now uh, business partner with Levels, Tyler, like both of us experienced in the same one month window, multiple friends slash friends of friends take their own lives just gone. Right. And some wow. of these people, it's like you talk to other folks in the circle and it's like, there's no like warning signs. There's just like, people are just suffering in silence. And so our thought is, you know, and also taking myself back to like, man, like tw maybe 2017, 2018, like right when I moved to Florida and just like, I had a vision. The business is really kind of like just struggling. I'm trudging through it. And you just feel so alone sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like I always say the hardest part for me was truly, it wasn't like videos not doing well or bad comment. It was just feeling like I was alone in a battle. Wow. And so how do you fix that? You know? And so we want to create a community where people can be a support network. And it's not like when you hear mastermind, you tend to think, business, 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 strategizing. Um, and there's value to that, obviously. But I think the, the, the hole that needs to be filled is just as people, how do we support each other? How do we live better lives? How can we be healthier? How can we find ways to position ourselves for success in what we're doing? And so that's the goal. That's the goal. Um, and we're starting it out kind of our pilot um, uh, uh, retreat is uh january 11th in sedona and it's uh it's really cool man we're doing like hiking rocking we have a breath work person coming in we're doing cold Let's plunging go. we're doing it's gonna be incredible so um yeah i feel it's it's just you talk about purpose driven like i just feel like yeah. th this could play a big role in people's lives so i'm excited about it did you ever see that starting your youtube channel 
like in person type of things? I know speaking in person probably, but did you see this type of event for yourself? Well, here's the deal. The rational brain says like, I mean, I say no to speaking engagements, right? Cause I'm like, uh -huh. I can put out a video that will make this in ad revenue. Yeah. Like I don't need to go do that. And so logically it's like, I'm not going to get rich doing that. But to me, right. it's just like, it means so much. And like, it's a, it's a mm. hole that I'm trying to mm. fill personally. And I know mm. people out there are fighting it. Uh, and clearly like, so you know, beautiful. suicide rates through the roof. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's like healthy military age men just offing themselves. Um, and, yeah. you know, that's complex. You can't solve that with a with a, a mastermind. But I think it's a big step in the right direction. And I think telling yeah. people it's OK to be vulnerable and reach out and, and create a community where people feel free to do that. Big deal. You know? Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I love hearing the way you feel about it. And I love like seeing this evolution of like this lit you up now this other part of you lit, lit you up and you have the access to do it and it's just like it's awesome to see that evolution of just like continuing to following it and push your comfort zone of like yes you want to add value you can have your brain so focused on what is this making me where is this going but then also like no this means too much to me and yeah and that's beautiful uh and it pushes my mind again Get it. because oh, yeah. i like tell me how tell me how <laughs> you want to know how it pushes me steve <laughs> um so like physically right like everyone i hang out with is in shape and like i i have been running forever and ever and ever but because of shoulder injuries like i've just kind of like closed that door and they're like well you will be a skinny runner guy forever right and now i'm around all these people like that are just want more and are excited and in shape and i'm like i am gonna find a way to fix these shoulders and start lifting heavy weight. If it's the last thing I do, I'm not going to be the smallest guy at my own mastermind, right? And it's just like creates this like really cool like you get pulled up by being yes. around excited, oh. energetic oh. people. And that's yeah. just one example, but it's 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 just yeah, it's exciting. Wow. First time is going to be so new and I'm excited to see how it influences your content too. Content not just stuff, but the the, the typical videos. Cause that's going to yeah. lead to so many new things. And that's, what's fun. It's like you follow those pulls that are so strong. It does actually affect your thing that you're, you're your main thing that you're doing. Dude, that's a really cool point for me. It's like one-to-one, -one. like when I do things and adventure and go out into the world and experience things, it gives me more to write about for more, people that yes. aren't, that aren't writing or speaking those experiences mm. go somewhere. Yes. Right. Yes. And so yes. like, yeah, it's, it's so important to, uh, to put yourself in front of a new stimuli and get out there into the world. It's, it's so powerful. That's it's, we said, try new things, but this is like having that courage to say, this is expanding me. And that's what I love about the magic of sharing is like when you share your journey and then you go on a, go on something, you bring it back and you say, this is what I learned from that journey. And I just follow this. Cause I think we all have that pull, but it takes that courage to follow that pull. And I think that pull is my favorite thing to try to reverse engineer is like how to get people to tap into that pull. And one way for me is like, what wants to come out? Like, what is that voice that's like you're scared to say that's maybe different or what's something you've never said? And I think the voice is so powerful because when you say it, it like literally takes you from a thought to like a, to the world. And then also saying it to someone else is huge. And then saying it online is even bigger. It's like, mm. yeah. So the voice is just such a wild thing. Yeah. You're saying like, once you put yourself out there, you're, you're sort of obligated to follow through on social. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Telling the word who you are. Like when I said I'm a rapper, it was just wild to see what unfolded. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't saying I rap on the side. I said, I'm a rapper. People like, Oh, I have a gig. Like that was like their next thing out of their, out well, their you did like, like oh, I know so many shows so quickly. Yeah. It, it was, was really cool was to see. So cool. Thank you, dude. Yeah. And that was something that's like, Oh my God, I dude, I loved being on stage and as someone who like in school did not, it was crazy to feel so at home. I'm like, I'm not as people, people would be like, how long have you been rapping? I'm like, this is my third show. They're like, how did you commanded the stage? It felt like you've done this for so long. I'm like, I, this is literally the third time I've ever said this rap out loud. Like, to, and there was like, and that to me was like, I just to observe yourself, like, how do you, that's so true to you. So when you try something new and it comes so naturally, that's that to me is like a sign. It's something that's expanding you. It's for you. It's something for you to follow. And whatever, however far along you follow it, wherever it takes you, 
just enjoy it. Just have fun. It's so fun, dude. It's ridiculous. Just yeah. rapping to people. What else? If you were to die today, what message is <laughs> on your heart just for this morning? I know we just talked about you're already connected with people, but today, what's going on, what's going on right now? Um, I think I'm in a, a season of life where I'm, you know, really trying to stretch out of my comfort zone. And uh, mm -hmm. the idea, it's it's like, um, so like life is not a flat line, obviously. It's, you know, we have like, it oscillates, like we have great mm -hmm. times and sort of times where we struggle. And I was thinking today, like in every single period in my life where I've just felt like the man, like a man on fire, it was Love like- that. I I uh, am convinced in my own mind that I do hard things. It's like that simple. And so like yeah. coming out of the cold plunge today, like the idea that I don't have to be there, right? Or or even being in there, you know, felt really cold, two minutes left. And it's like little things like counting 30 seconds at a time and uh, stepping out and just being like, I do hard things. And it, <clears throat> It just excites me, right? Because I don't, yeah, all of this is self induced and we all have it in our own way. I don't need to be growing my team or expanding. I don't need to be creating a group. I don't need to be doing any of these things, but I'm drawn to them because they're difficult and they matter. And I mm -hmm. think teaching yourself that you can do hard things is the difference. And so mm -hmm. that would be my message is like, one, you can do hard things. And two, it's important to find ways to convince yourself that you need to believe that you do hard things. And however you can do that, whether it's running, pushing through the hurt, whether it's something silly, like hopping into a cold plunge for six minutes, five mm -hmm. minutes, just continually teaching yourself that when things are eyes that mm -hmm. suck or are uncomfortable, you do them, period. And uh, yeah, I'm always at my best when I'm there mentally, you know? Yes, totally agree. Simple <laughs> things. That's what I love about running now too. It's like, I, I have no excuses. I think one thing about doing the hard things is how can you remove the excuses? Like people say cold plunge. I want to do it the right way to plunge. I took a cold shower and it's freezing because it's like winter a little bit. It's not that bad. But the point is, it's like, there's no excuse for me not to do it. It's like, it takes a couple minutes. It takes this. And that's what I like about running. I throw shoes on. It's sun out. There's so many ways to remove all the excuses from doing the hard thing. And at the end of the day, doing the hard thing, you feel so good. It, it, uh, I agree. Yeah. Nice. All right, dog. Any yeah. wild videos where we could expect or any new content or anything? What what should people why should people follow you this year? What's going on 2024? Yeah, you gotta you gotta follow you all within. You gotta hear the stories and uh, you know, stay stay up on uh different thoughts, ideas, things that'll help keep your mind sharp. So we're expanding YouTube from three videos a week to five, which is Ooh. a big deal. Big deal. Um, delving into stoicism a little bit. So like that's going to be unpacking a stoic idea or quote Dude, once nice. a week is going to be um, a part of the series. And I am affirmations, which I think is up your alley. Um, yeah, uh, I, I've started doing those. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, this is adding value. So it'll probably add value to others. Yes. Right? And so uh, we started creating I am Powerful, affirmation dude. videos. So I yeah. Love, I love something you said earlier about the exponential growth. He's a man on fire. It's hundred percent. He's on fire. <laughs> uh, one one thing, one thing we learned today is that you cannot light liquids yeah. on fire. That's it. You so you can try. Up, yeah. But you can be a man on fire. Wait, you can light some on fire, right? Like, yeah, you definitely Gasoline. can. Oil, oil light right up. <laughs> <laughs> you jogged my memory by the way. Oh, perfect. So speaking about that exponential growth, are you shooting? Is your goal a million subs this year or more? Yeah, I mean, I want to be two or three for sure. For sure. 10 exit, baby. 20. 20. Yeah. <laughs> 500 subs. Um, I, I think it's funny because, like, it's you look back and you go, yeah, well, it's taken you nine years to get to almost 700,000. Right? But that's all like 300,000 of that's come in the past six months. You know, so it's growing so exponentially. Dude, that's, that's so fun. Holy shit. Okay. So on that note, when you were having a tougher, because like it is slower growth at the beginning. When you're having slower growth early on, you have close to 700,000 now. What would, you probably felt this voice, which is what I love about life is like that voice, that pull is probably your higher self. That's how I see the world. Mm -hmm. There is no time. Time has collapsed. 
if you were to give yourself <laughs> if you were to give yourself a word of advice going through that tough time to just give him a nudge to keep going forward what would you tell him yeah the the big thing is like everything had to be measured in perfect and it's your job is not to be perfect it's not even to be remotely or kind mm -hmm. of perfect it's to agree sign a contract with yourself that you will continuously do two things keep moving forward and adjust you step and you pivot and you step and you pivot. And if you do those things, you have to arrive somewhere good. You have to. <laughs> like you're moving yeah. forward and you're learning mm -hmm. and adjusting, you know? So like that's it. That to me is – that's awesome. I love that. Couldn't agree more. I feel like that is nature. That is like tapping into nature's evolution of like we're going to grow. Okay, the sun shines too bright. We're going to change our leaves. And that's like genetics forming. So it's almost like – creativity and the way you scale your life, your business, whatever it is, is tapping into that ability to adapt with your environment and always pushing out of your zone to grow and survive and not just survive, thrive and expand into your highest potential. God, so good. Amen. And, you, and by the way, you have, to like, and adjust. you have to relearn that in different areas. Like, it's not like you learn it once and then it becomes easy. Yeah. It's like I over, yeah. overcame fear once and, it, and now I'm not scared anymore. It's like, no, like it's a thing you continuously go up against. Like this levels retreat, there are things here, like, dude, you know, it's far from perfect. It's, it's you know, it's going to be incredible, but I'm sure there are going to be bumps along the way. And, you know, I found myself in the same spot. It's like micromanaging. Well, what if, you know, should we wait until, no, mm -hmm. go find a no. great group of guys, make it happen. Um, and you'll so just get good. way further that way. Yeah. That is the beautiful growth ability to step into the unknown. You'll never know it for sure because it's unknown. It's new. It's out of your comfort zone. How could that be fully known? That's the whole point. So that courageous step, beautiful duel. Thank you so much. I'll leave it there. And, um, I'm excited to watch you exponentially freaking grow. I did want to say that growth is mastery. That's what I see that exponential. You'll never reach it. There's no finish line. That's the fun. See life as that game of mastery, just trying to get better and better and just know it's a game. See how far we can go. See how high we can shine. I'm going to throw, <laughs> I love it, man. I love, I'm going to, I'm going to go uh, way back here to when we were in Florida and I don't remember, but there was a book that talked about that. Like the, the, mm -hmm. what is it? Asymptote. The lines that don't, yes. Mastery oh. is an asymptote. Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah, I, I remember that book too. I think it was I think it was black and red, as all books are that are about motivation a lot of times. So guys, pick but, up the black and red one next time you <laughs> <laughs> Was it the Greg McCown one? Um was it Greg McCune? No, Greg I don't think it was was it essentialism? I don't think so. That one or it was yeah, maybe it was in that era. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. That I I, I keep to that. And Bruce Lee talks about that too, is just life is just a journey of mastery. Hell yeah. I love all it. Right, man. Well, thank you. And uh, it's great catching up as always and seeing all the Much awesome love, stuff dude. you're doing. Keep inspiring, man.